What is going on everybody, it's Stas here, welcome back to another video. So in this video, we're going to be doing yet again another market update, looking at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're going to be talking about one trade that I made today on the 12th of February in 2019, as well as taking a look at some other stocks and ETFs that I see potential in and that did very well today. So before we do get into this, for all of you out there that enjoy the content that find value in the content here on YouTube feel free to hit that like button it really does help the channel grow and it really just tells me that I'm doing a good job here as a creator and as always I appreciate you guys so much for watching these videos liking the videos and of course subscribing and keeping up with the content you know regularly it means a lot to me so let's talk about what happened today guys on the 12th of February in the stock market we had a very, very solid green day, right? As you can already tell from my watch list here, you know, you can only point out three red tickers, right? You know, we've seen green, we, we see green all throughout the board here on my watch list. And let's just talk about what ended up happening today on a technical basis in the SPX, the Dow, and the NASDAQ. So here the SPX guys ended up closing off the day up around $35, up around $1.5. 0.29%. The Dow Jones had a strong day today, up around $372, up nearly 1.5%. And the NASDAQ guys up another $100 today, up 105 to be exact, up 1.5%. We are officially back into the $7,000 range for the NASDAQ composite guys. So, you know, my long term portfolio, a lot of the large cap stocks today you know i know a lot of your portfolios out there were green guys green across the board let's talk about what ended up happening today starting off with the spx so we see here on the spx guys the s p 500 index these two trend lines that we've been talking about over these past couple of videos, right? And for all you new viewers out there, pretty much the SPX, the entire market has been uptrending since the end of 2018, and we're up nearly 15% at this point in the SPX. So needless to say, 2019 has been a very good year so far for stocks. But back to these two trend lines, guys, this is the channel that the SPX has been trading on over these past couple of weeks and we can see this a bit closer on this 20 day one hour chart so for you guys that recall in yesterday's video i was talking about this level right here for the spx do you guys remember this the head and shoulders pattern that we were talking about in yesterday's video the left shoulder the head and the potential right shoulder forming well what we needed to see for this pattern to complete itself was a red day. We needed to see a red day today, pretty much pushing the candlesticks down for this head and shoulder pattern to complete itself and really for this downtrend to begin, right? But obviously, we did not get that. We got the bounce on the support for the higher high here in the SPX, and we hit around 27.50. So do you guys remember that in yesterday's video? I was talking about we're either going to break below here to complete that head and shoulders, or we're going to hold above it to continue the uptrend. We ended up holding above it. And now, honestly, guys, we're headed towards that resistance, the top part of this channel here, you know, indicated by this trend line. So if we look back a little bit to see, you know, where the SPX could be potentially headed, well, the top of this channel will probably put the SPX, you know, roughly 30, maybe 25 to 40 ish points above where we ended up closing today. So let's say tomorrow we end up having, you know, another strong green day, we could be headed towards that top of the channel where at that point, we're either going to pull back slightly, right? Maybe have another couple of days like this, or we're going to break out of that channel and continue the bullish run, which honestly, guys, might put us in a little bit of an overbought, uh, you know, uh, range for the SPX. So I think it's more likely, let's say we have another green day tomorrow, maybe even two green days in a row, putting us to the top of this channel. I think it's more 
more likely that we'll pull back from there a little bit before continuing the uptrend before, um, you know, rather than breaking above it and continuing to run, right? Because we've seen over the past couple of uh, weeks, really, you know, every time we run for a couple of days, it cools off. We pull back a little bit, right? We get towards that support of the channel and then we end up running again for a couple of days, right? We can see the pullback, the cool off, then a couple of days of running, the pullback, the cool off. Now a couple of days of running, you know, maybe two, three more green days before the pullback, you know, wouldn't be too out of, you know, question, too out of, uh, you know, reach right now for the SPX. So, you know, judging on that 20 day chart, guys, you know, everything's looking gravy right now for the uptrend. We're still pushing up. And it honestly looks like we're about to start testing these previous resistances from a couple of weeks back, really a couple of months back at this point, from where we started to sell off in the beginning of October, right? We can see the first resistance at around 28.15, at around 28.10 is the next one. And the one I just drew for you guys is around 27.95. So these next coming weeks, guys, especially with the trade war March 1st deadline, you know, this is going to be a very interesting time, you know, for the overall market. Is the trend line, you know, or is the trade deadline? I said trend line, trade deadline. That's kind of a very similar uh, word duo right there. But trade deadline, you know, that might put a lot of stress on the market. We might sell off very heavily. We might run up and break this resistance if we do come to a trade agreement, you know, who knows, guys? I've been saying the month of February is going to be a very big month because of earnings, you know, the trade deadline. So let's see what is going to end up happening these next couple of weeks, guys. I'm very, very interested to see. Drop a comment down below. Are we going to break this resistance, do you think? Are we going to start testing, you know, the all-time high for the SPX at around 2940? What do you guys think? Do you think this year we're going to end up heading back up and continuing this bull run before a potential? potential 2020 recession that we've been hearing out there from some big hedge fund managers, including Ray Dalio. You know, what's going to happen? You think we're going to test all-time highs before we crash? What do you think? Let me know down below in the comments section. So judging off this Dow Jones chart very quickly, guys, it's very similar, right? We were trading in this channel here on the 20-day one-hour chart. We thought we were potentially selling off yesterday due to the slight break of the channel. But today, guys, with that nearly $400 push. We're trading right back into that channel, right in the middle of the channel. And we're honestly testing this resistance right now at around $25,400 to $500. So tomorrow, guys, let's take a look what's going to end up happening. Are we going to break this resistance to start to fill to the top of this channel, which I personally think is probably going to happen at this point since we are, you know, right in the middle here, unless we do have some drastic news that does push down the stock market market, right? You know, just like the SPX, I think the Dow, we could potentially see some more green, right? And the top of this channel for the Dow, if we take a little bit of a look back here, you know, might be putting the Dow roughly at around 25,750, maybe around 25,800. Hundred dollars, which right now, guys, based off the technicals, is not too far fetched of a price for the Dow Jones to get to, right? So, very simple, guys. If you're following along on Thinkorswim, whatever platform you guys are using, just draw out this channel. It'll give you a better idea of where the markets are pushing. So, therefore, you can plan your trades, right? If you were to do this and you notice the uh, push early on in the morning, you could have hopped in on some, you know, market ETFs that go up when the market market goes up, some large cap stocks that do very well, that did pretty well today that we're going to be talking about, you know, you could have took an advantage, taken advantage of that opportunity, right? So, you know, Dow Jones, guys, what do you think? Is it going to break this next resistance at around, let's say, 25,500 tomorrow and then eventually break, you know, 25,800, maybe into 26,000 territory soon? What do you guys think? Are we going to get to the top here, to the all-time high, crack $27,000. You know, that is going to be a very interesting sight to see in these next coming weeks and months in the stock market. So the NASDAQ today, guys, very solid day in terms of the overall NASDAQ. And just like the Dow guys, just like the S&P, the NASDAQ is no different. It's trading in this channel that we see on this 20 day and on this 180 chart, you can both see it. On, uh, you can see it on both of these charts here. And just to go a little bit closer here, guys, you know, we're testing that resistance 
on the NASDAQ at around 7,000 right now, 7,020. This is where we got rejected from the top of the channel about a couple of, roughly about a week ago at this point, at around 7,038. We pulled back, held a higher low from the previous, the uptrend still intact. We bounced on the support of this, uh, you know, trend line here. And now we're pushing up with the target, in my opinion, being at around like 70, 90. You know, that would put it right at the top. And if I extend this a little bit for you guys, um, let me extend this very quickly so you guys can see you know where we could potentially be heading right we can see if i extend it a bit you know that's going to put the nasdaq roughly at around 70 90 like i said maybe even at around 7100 but note guys you know we are a bit overbought here on the rsi in terms of the nasdaq and i didn't check the rsi for the other two but yep we are a bit overbought on the dow as well and the spx but just because we're overbought guys this doesn't really mean anything, right? We don't really base our decisions off of one indicator. Just because this says it's overbought doesn't mean 100% it's going to pull back, right? It could still run another 5% before pulling back, right? Who honestly knows, guys? These indicators are just here to supplement us, just like the analogy that I used a couple of weeks back where if you're in the gym lifting weights, if you're bodybuilding, trying to put on muscle, you know, the supplements, right, the creatine, the protein, right, the, uh, the amino acids, the pre-workout, whatever you guys use, those are supplements to working out. They don't necessarily make your performance better, right? but they're there to help your performance. Just think about these indicators like supplements for trading, right? They don't necessarily, um, you know, they do help, right? Just like the supplements, but they don't necessarily, it's not like a do or die type of thing where you have to ride on one indicator or you won't see success, right? That kind of thing. If you guys understand what I'm saying, I've used that analogy before. People understood it. They liked it. They, they mentioned it in the comments. So I figured since we've gotten a couple hundred subscribers since then i use that same analogy for all you out there that are new viewers to this channel so you know guys the nasdaq what do you think it's going to do do you think we're going to end up heading back up to this 7728 dollar range right that's quite a bit more to go that's another 10 percent to the upside from where we are right now but think about it guys you know, we've swung a matter of 15, 20% since the end of December, and it's only been about a month and a half. So it doesn't seem too out of hand since we already made a pretty solid move in the past one and a half months here in the stock market. So now to talk a little bit about what I ended up trading today. I traded ticker symbol CHGG, and we can see that here on my 2 slash 12 slash 19 movers watch list, and they're all pretty much green except for Tesla, which I'm actually still swing trading. We're going to be talking about that in a couple of minutes here, but Chegg is actually one that I ended up day trading today thanks to, I believe the uh, Discord name, I believe is like Surfing, Surfing Stocks. Thank Thank you, Surf and Stocks. If you're watching this video, you are the reason why I ended up making my profit today on CHGG. This is Chegg. For all you guys that don't know, it's like an informational website. College students use it. I used to use it where you can find, you know, answers. You can find, uh, you know, help, tutorials on how to do certain problems, certain questions. You can watch along with step-by-step, -step, you know, formulas and stuff like that. And pretty much, guys, this stock... Just reported, yeah, they just reported earnings and the stock went up from $34 up to around $38.90. So he actually ended up calling it out like pre-market hours today or something like that, you know, early market. And it actually brought to my attention when he ended up calling it out due to the big gap up that it did have, right? We saw the big gap up here to around $38.50 from around $34 due to earnings. I don't know what they reported in earnings. I don't really follow this company, but I'm assuming they had a good earnings report due to the stock market, the market, the investors reacting to the way where the stock went up nearly 10% like that, right? Right when the market opened, the stock was up 10%. And then what do we notice here, guys? Well, we ended up selling off pretty, pretty heavily here from around $38 all the way down to about $36. And what is this, guys? This is mostly people, right, that are taking their profits 
from Chegg. The stock was $23 a couple of weeks ago. I'm sure people bought in a couple of weeks ago at around $23, right? Right around here, $23. And I'm sure a bunch of them have been holding and are up a crap ton on their positions, right? They're up a good amount. And the fact that it shot up 10% overnight, right? It might be a good idea to start taking some profits, right, for those people, maybe even long-term investors, since this is an all-time high, I do believe, right? And that's why we saw some selling off in the stock, right? Nothing crazy, just some profit-taking from short-term money, and I'm sure, you know, some long-term investors were taking their profits today as well. And that ended up giving up around, let's see how much percentage this was, about 6% margin that we as traders could potentially make if the stock stock ends up filling that gap back up to the resistance, which it ended up doing to the T, right? I personally did not end up catching 6% on this trade. I ended up catching around, I believe it was like 1.8% on my Chegg trade. It was a very quick trade. Let me actually just get my charger very quickly so the laptop doesn't die on me. The trade ended up being a very quick scalp trade, right? And I pretty much got in, not at the bottom here. I wanted to see it find the bottom first which it did at around 3625 right and then i wanted to see it slowly start to uptrend back up we can see the big pump here in the green candlestick this one shot it up about a percent or two right the big pump then we got that pullback we got the continuous pump and what is that telling me that's telling me that it's making higher lows right the staircases to the upside higher lows it's uptrending and it could potentially be reversing to the upside for a potential gap fill so once i ended up seeing that guys literally within 10-15 minutes of the market, I started to build a position at around 36.90 to around 37.05. This is when I started building my position. Ended up holding it for a couple of minutes here, and then I ended up getting out on this pop-up all the way up to 37.72. And we can see here, guys, from around 37 up to around 37.72, that did give me around that 1.7, 1.8 that I told you guys in terms of my profit. So very quick, about 10, 15 minute trade here on Chegg. Very nice call out. Thanks again, man. If you're watching this video, I really do appreciate that call out. And that's the whole beauty of this Discord group chat. We're not giving each other, you know, we're not just telling each other what to trade. We're shouting out stocks where we do our own research on them and we make our decisions for ourselves, right? There's a difference between me telling you to trade this and me telling you, take a look at the stock, take a look at the stock and you making the decision on whether you like it, whether it fits your plan and whether you like, um, whether you trade it, right? And this one is what I typically trade in terms of day trading, meaning I trade gaps. I like trading stocks that pull back and slowly start to fill the gap, right? We talk about this all the time, the pullback, the bottom and the slow gap fill. That is what I typically trade all the time. And that's since he called that one out and I saw it doing exactly what I personally like, I traded it. But, you know, if it was a pattern that I personally didn't like, I would simply scrap the stock and I wouldn't trade it. So, so that's the summary on the Chegg trade today, ticker symbol CHGG. A little update here on Tesla. You guys do remember that I'm holding some Tesla shares, or I was in Tesla rather yesterday at around $313. I bought in a couple of shares with the goal here of swing trading them. And my plan going into this Tesla trade was to add more money into Tesla once we did break above $320 and to cut losses once we break below this 50 SMA at around 310. So the fact that we held that 50 SMA today on this 180 chart is the reason why I did not cut losses. And it really is just telling us that we're still holding this higher low uptrend pattern for Tesla, although we did get rejected by this 180 SMA. So tomorrow, guys, you know, if we break this 180 SMA resistance, that's what I really want to see for the continuation of the uptrend and for me to add more money into Tesla. But if we do break this 50 SMA, maybe get back into the 305, 308, 310 range, I might have to consider cutting losses on 
Tesla, guys. So that's just a quick little um, update. I'm still holding my shares here um, in Tesla. You know, I'm down a little bit, like literally a dollar twenty cents per share right now. Nothing crazy whatsoever. Minimal percentage points is what I'm down right now, and I don't. Uh, really mind holding these overnight, right? If it drops 5, 10 points tomorrow, you know, at that point, I'll only be down around 1%, 2%, and I'll just cut losses, right? No big deal there. So we saw some other stocks today, guys, including you guys opening up a potential buy point in my personal opinion, right? And let's talk about you guys very quickly, guys, and you guys is an inverse ETF. It's a bull ETF that trades based upon natural gas. And whenever natural gas is going up in price, that is when you gas is going up in price. So we see <clears throat> some bullish action in natural gas over these past couple of days, right? We can see we're trading at around 266 right now after finding the bottom at around 254. And it seems like we're holding a higher low at around 262, which you can see a bit closer here on this 20 day, one hour chart. So what I'm seeing here in natural gas guys is a potential bullish move and it's trying to honestly break this 180 SMA resistance here on this one day, one hour, or 20 day, one hour chart. And the fact that we already broke the 50 SMA guys, right? And we're holding that 50 SMA as a support, which was a resistance over these past couple of days here on this 20 day, one hour chart. And we see the 50 SMA slowly starting to cross above the 180 SMA, which is a very bullish sign. You know, this could be the start of the reversal uptrend for natural gas, which will open up a ton of margin on you guys because it's quite frankly been beaten down so hard over these past couple of weeks, guys. So very bullish move right here, higher low, holding the 50 SMA as a support. The potential bullish move of the 50 SMA breaking above the 180 SMA. Those are three different signs, indicators that we're pushing up in natural gas. So you guys, guys, you know, we're trading above the 50 SMA instead of under the 50 SMA. Good sign for a potential reversal. And honestly, guys, anything above $32, if we do break 32, I think that's going to be a good potential entry. And of course, if we break the 180 SMA, that's going to be a very good potential buy point, um, you know, in terms of you guys, because from there, you know, it can literally run back up to $40, which is a previous result resistance, right? You know, $36 is one as well. You know, there's a lot of margin in you guys if we do end up pushing up here. And of course, if natural gas does break that resistance that we were talking about a couple of minutes ago. So we went over you guys. We saw what I did in terms of Tesla today. Chegg, absolutely crazy move. Um, UWT guys, very solid move today as well. Did any of you guys end up trading UWT? Let me know down below. This one's a crude oil ETF. It goes up whenever crude oil is going up in price. And we saw yesterday, actually, crude oil tanked to around $51, right? We saw that. Wait, this was today. No, no, no. This was today. Yesterday, we saw the five-day, five-minute chart here. We saw we tanked all the way down to $51, where I was able to profit to the upside on UWT, right? And we can see we ran all the way up to $54. We pulled back to around $53. And now we're testing that 50 SMA resistance again, potentially trying to break back up the $54. So what this pullback from 54 to 53 ended up doing, well, that opened up a nice margin of profit on UWT for tomorrow, guys. So tomorrow, I'm going to see if it's going to end up trending back into the 1330, maybe 1340 level, so we can capitalize on 2-3% to the previous resistance back up to 1380 on UWT. So another one that did decent today was Cron. Not much movement to the uh, end of the day here, but to the downside. But in the morning, we saw a big run from around $19 back up to $22, at, no, $20.50, which gave it an 8% run. So did anyone end up playing Crom? Let me know down below in the comments section. EA Electronic Arts, guys, it's still holding this uptrend, but this could be a potential triple top 
here in EA, which is not too good of a sign for an uptrend or the continuation of the uptrend rather. But if we do end up popping above here, guys, you know, that could end up making EA run even more, which at this point, guys, Seems a bit crazy since the stock was literally $75 a couple of days back. So can this hot streak continue? Only time will tell, guys. But for the day, today, $5 day, up around 5.23%, guys. So very solid day in terms of EA. Facebook down about $0.75 cents today. Not much to talk about. Apple back into the 170s today, up around $1.49 here. It's holding that 50 SMA, so a potential bounce play from there back up to 175 I'm watching that tomorrow. We saw excuse me, Google up around 2.5% today, bounced on that 50 SMA very nicely. Netflix up 14%, up 4%. We see a bunch of the tech stocks did pretty well today, guys, except for Facebook. And, you know, that's pretty much why the NASDAQ did very, very well today, right? We see Amazon up 3%, Apple up 2 3%. Solid day across the tech stocks. So I'm going to wrap up the video right here. If you ended up enjoying this video, Feel free to hit that like button, drop a comment down below, subscribe to the channel if you're new, if you do want to see more market updates, trading updates, you know, trading strategies, stuff like that, subscribe to the channel, and uh, I'll catch you all in the next video. I appreciate all you watching. Peace out.